I'm not going to tell you that we're living in a simulation. All I'm going to say is that if we were, we would have no way of knowing. <laughs> this is because in order to know for sure, we would have to know reality as it truly is objectively. And since our only access point to reality is our subjective senses, and since we have nothing to which we can compare the data we receive from those senses, we have no real reason to believe that data. Understanding this is critical to understanding ourselves as perceptive beings and to understanding the world in which we live. As a philosophy major, I read about and study sensation, perception, and subjectivity all the time, which is why I can tell you there are three things we need to keep in mind when we're considering the human sense experience. The first is that the world as it really is is often completely incomprehensible to us. The second is that the truth about the world is often irrelevant to our needs and our survival. The third and final thing is that when we attempt to understand the world in which we live, our motives are often dishonest. So, addressing the first point, the incomprehensibility of the world. In order to do this, I'm gonna borrow from a thought experiment by Thomas Nagel from New York University. Imagine with me, if you will, that you are a bat. I'm sure there are certain parts about bat life that are very easy for you to imagine. <laughs> you might be able to imagine what it would be like to hang upside down from your clawed bat feet or fly through the air on your webbed bat wings. But there's one thing a bat does that you cannot imagine no matter how hard you try, and that is echolocation. We humans with our five senses simply cannot synthesize the experience of this extra sixth sense that a bat has, which means there's an entire aspect of reality a bat can see that we can't see. It's incomprehensible to us. Is this a problem? Well, it seems like we're all living and doing just fine in the world, right? And this is because that extra sixth sense that the bat has is just irrelevant to us. Here's another example. If you're feeling brave, take a look up at the screen and go ahead and shout out what color it is. Blue. Purple. <laughs> that was extra brave. The truth is, this screen is not blue or purple. This screen really has no color at all. As some of you, I'm sure, know, color is merely the result of different wavelengths and frequencies of traveling light. But have you ever stopped to consider the fact that that's all color really is? In our heads, we see colors, but that doesn't exist in the real world. In a speech entitled, Do We See Reality As It Really Is?, Donald Hoffman puts it this way. While it seems that our eyes take snapshots of reality as it really is, in fact, our brains construct everything we see. Color is a construct of our minds. Everything that we experience in our senses is something constructed in our minds, and what is in our minds is not the same as what is in the world. But since we use only what is in our minds to make decisions and to go about our days, what is in the world is irrelevant to us. Here's another way to look at it. Imagine that you need to predict an oncoming storm. In order to do this, you would have to know when air pressure in the atmosphere was falling dramatically. Now, unfortunately, this is not something that humans can detect. But luckily, using a tool called a barometer, you can measure the air pressure in the atmosphere. So, using the barometer, when you saw the barometer needle falling rapidly, you would know that a storm is coming. But as the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy points out, the falling barometer is not exactly the same as the falling air pressure. In the same way that the constructions of the world in our minds are not exactly the same as the world itself. But just like we can use the barometer to predict a coming storm, we can use the constructions of our minds to thrive in the world. Now for my final point, our dishonesty. 19th century German philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche put it this way. 
Knowledge is not an attempt to mirror an independently real world, but rather it is an attempt to accommodate ourselves to the world and that world to us. What this means is that we do not even try to understand the world as it really is. Instead, we get enough of the picture so that we can make decisions and survive, while at the same time trying to adapt both ourselves and the world to have a more pleasant experience ourselves. If you think about it, this is a lot like trying to fit a square peg into a round hole. It's not going to fit, and it wasn't designed to fit. If you push it hard enough, it might stick, but it's not going to be an exact match, just like our picture of reality is not an exact match to reality as it really is. So, are we living in a simulation? Probably not. But are we living in exactly the same world that our senses tell us we're living in? Also no, because remember, the world we live in is often incomprehensible to us. The details about that world are often irrelevant to our needs and our survival, and our attempts to understand that world are often dishonest. <laughs>